Hi, today we're going to talk about saving data in Power Apps. What we're going to do is we're going to learn about the patch function, right? We all know how to save data with forms. We all start with forms, but very quickly you outgrow forms because you want to build more complicated apps with more moving parts, right? Whether it's barcode readers or address inputs or using collections or variables, right? Like very quickly, all of a sudden it's like, hey, using a form's gotten really weird. So that's why Microsoft has us the patch function, which allows us just to take individual inputs and create new records in our data source. So today we're going to do patch 101. We're going to start at the beginning and explain to you exactly how it works. If you've used it before and you're like, eh, I don't really understand, but I kind of understand, this is probably a good video for you because we're going to go through a very structured way of patching those core columns. All right, so let's just jump over to my desktop and take a look. Over here on the desktop, we are going to start with a blank app. I just created a literally blank app with nothing else. And the first thing we need is a data source, right? You're going to want to save data to what we call a tabular data source. So think of that as like your SharePoint list, Dataverse tables, SQL tables, something like that, some structured data. So for us, we're going to use a SharePoint list, but nothing about this is going to be SharePoint specific, Pacific, whatever that word is. So we're just going to go up over here, add a data source. We're going to search for SharePoint. After way too long, it finally loaded. We're going to choose SharePoint, choose one of my SharePoint connections. And then over here, we're going to use my Power Apps video site, and we're going to choose the employees list. All right, so with all that chosen, we're going to click connect down there at the bottom under my face. And so now we have a tabular data source. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add a gallery. So insert a vertical gallery in here. The gallery is not really part of this, but you got to be able to see what you've done, right? So that's what we're going to do. And we'll kind of drag this down here. We'll make a couple of quick changes. We're just going to throw people's name in here because I know that I'll end up referring to them as their name. And then we're going to just drag this up here and we're going to patch a couple other fields. So we'll copy this one, copy, paste. We'll drag it below. And for this particular one, we're going to do their age. And then we're going to do one more paste. So click out of there and paste Put this down here. We're going to then do their hire date. Actually, let's do one more as well. So we'll paste, we'll make this bigger one more time. And then we'll paste one more time again, pull this down here. And this one we're going to do good at their job, right? And so these are the fields we're gonna learn, right? We're gonna learn text. We're going to learn age, which is a number. We're gonna learn hire date, which is a date. And then good at their job, which is yes, no, and SharePoint, but a true false. And so like if you're using SQL, this would be a bit field or in Dataverse, it is just a yes, no. So there you go, so those are the fields we're gonna update. The other thing I wanna do, just to make this easier on us in a minute, we're gonna do a sort by columns here, and we're going to sort by the ID column, and we're gonna do that descending. That way, the latest one that I make goes up at the top. And just to get rid of this, you know what, we're gonna add one more thing in here, we're gonna do a remove employees, this item, and so that way we can delete this. All right. So there you go. So we just have our core data. That was from my practice run. Shh. And so now that we've got this, now what we want to talk about is how to create a new record using patch. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the most basics. So we're going to insert a button and we're going to write the simplest patch ever. And so to do that, we're going to say patch. That's the name of the function. And then it says, all right, what table do you want to update? And this could be like our SharePoint list or our Dataverse table. This could also be a collection any tabular data source, but for right now, we're just gonna use our SharePoint list. Now this is all right, well, what record do you want? What this is really saying is, hey, do you want me to create a new record or do you want me to update an existing? So to make this as easy, like foolproof as possible, we're going to do create a new one. So we're gonna do defaults and then the same list name. So if your list is named something different, then you would have that there, right? So that just says, create a new record in employees. Boom, just like that. The third piece here is we have to have a record. So in Power Apps, records are always in curly brackets like that. So if we close our parentheses, technically that's a valid patch statement that would patch a blank record in theory. But because we have a required column, it wouldn't work, but we don't care, right? But that's the structure. That's where I need you guys to start. So now we want to patch this person's title because that is the required field. So I'm going to type it, start typing my column name. Notice as I start to type that in, it auto suggests. So it's going to be title colon. Right? And using the auto suggesting is going to help you when you're using your data for the first time because it'll be different than mine, right? And so title is a text column. So we're going to have some text and we're going to say title goes here just like so. Notice it's in double quotes. Notice that I can hover like this. And if I highlight that, it says, hey, that's the title, the text. Title goes here. Data type is text. Data types are the hardest thing about this. You've got to give it what it wants, right? The golden rule in all my training classes, live one coming up soon, you should go sign up, is 
Power Apps just wants what Power Apps wants. In this case, it wants a title column. And so title is text. And so we just have to give it text. It doesn't matter if it comes from hard-coded text there, comes from a variable, comes from a control, which we're gonna see here in a second. All right, so let's just try and press that button. So if we hold on the Alt key, you can press the button and interact with it. So we press that. You're gonna see for a second, it blinks and goes back and look at that. It has created a new record in our SharePoint list called title, go, where title goes here. That's the first piece of information we needed. So now that we've seen how that works, now what we might wanna do here is say format text. And the reason you wanna do this format text thing is it breaks it out into the pieces, a little easier to visualize. So there's title goes here. Now we wanna update another field. So we also wanna update first name. So we just do a comma here. We'll start to type in first. It'll auto suggest the first name column. And it is also a text column. And so we'll just say FN for first name. Look at that, it's happy. Do the format text again now to break them across multiple lines, even easier to read. All right, now what if we want to do age? And we're not going to create them every time, right? We're going to do this one time. So I'm going to hit enter here. I'm going to start to type in age. There it is, auto suggest, we'll hit tab. Now age in this case is a number column. So number columns means I have to give it a number. So if I type in this, it's going to yell at me. Anytime it yells at you, I just want you to go hover. It's gonna to try to help you. The type of argument age does not match the expected type number found type text. If you were to highlight this 12, what's it gonna tell you? It's gonna tell you data type is text. It doesn't want text. What does it want? It wants a number. So instead of that, we're gonna delete it out and we'll just type in 12 like that. Now it's happy. Data type is a number. It's getting the number it wants. This is the hardest thing for people with patch. Just wants what it wants. Give it what it wants. Comma, let's hit enter again. Same thing for, start to type in higher date, right? There's higher date. Higher date is a date as a text column, or sorry, it's a date column. So we're gonna give it a function that returns a date. In this case, the today function returns a date. Now, in a minute, we're gonna use different inputs to kind of see how this works, but right now, right, hard coding these. And I can't stress this enough. Do it this way when you're learning, and then in a minute, we're gonna kind of make it harder and harder and harder but this, like, like this is foolproof, basically, right? Like we're not leaving anything up to chance. We don't have extra moving parts. Let's get it working the easiest way and then troubleshoot from there. So the last one, hit enter again. This is going to be uh, good at their job, tab. And what is good at their job? It is a yes, no, or a Boolean. And so in this case, we're going to say good at their job and we'll say false. Now, if you were doing Dataverse, Yes, no fields, it's a little bit different for that one. Like I probably wouldn't try this one in a Dataverse to begin with because that one's gonna require a different thing. We're not gonna get into that complexity today, but for right now, that would work, okay? So we've got all these in here. Let's see if this works. We'll kind of grab our little button here. We'll hold down the Alt key, we'll press it. It'll think for a second. Look at that, title goes here, FN, 12, today's date, and false, which is exactly the same stuff we had up here. Yes, we're doing it, folks. There's our first patch, almost foolproof, okay? Now, let's go a step further because probably don't really want to patch a bunch of hard-coded stuff. I get that. What do you probably want to patch? You probably want to have inputs, right? You want to kind of create your own form. So what we would do is we can go over here to the insert and we're going to say insert a text input. We're going to drag it down here and we're going to clear out the default value. And we're also going to go here to the left. I'm going to double click on this and rename it to INPFN. Like so, right? You don't have to rename it, but watch how much easier this is going to make our lives. So now for first name, instead of this FN, what do we want? We want INPFN, right? Our control. And look, if you put the cursor here, it's going to tell you, like, let's highlight this thing. Data type is control. Can, is SharePoint expecting a control? No, right? SharePoint is expecting text. So what do we need to do? We need to drill down into that. So we would do a dot at the end. And now it says, hey, here's all the properties I know about that. The inputs have a text property. Input FN has the text of, it's blank right now, but it is text. So if we were to go and hit play, and then we were to type in um, buddy, then what? Now if we go back and look here, if we patch this thing, look, input FN is buddy, and it is data type text is exactly what it wanted. So let's double check, make sure, let's hit hold, hold, Alt key. Look at that. There is, title goes here, buddy, 12, blah, 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 blah. 
right? Because we didn't change any of the other ones. We only made this one an input. What if we want to do age, all right? Insert another text input. We're going to rename this one to INP age. We're also going to get rid of the default text. And maybe you're really fancy, you're like, hey, I even know that I can go over here to the right, and I can change the format of that from number to text. Cool, we'll hit play. We'll type in one, because buddy is almost one. And then now if we do this, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back up here. Now remember, what did you just tell me this wants? This wants a number, that's gonna be important, two seconds. So we're gonna do IMP H. That's the control, we can't use the control. So we're gonna do dot, now there isn't a dot number. Unfortunately, text inputs only have text as outputs. So if we do this, we're gonna get an error. But Shane, we typed in the right thing, we used tab complete, we couldn't have messed up. Hover, in type of argument, right? Age expects the number, you gave it text, but it's the number one. No, it's the text one, it's not the number one. So what do you have to do in this case? You have to use what is called the value function. The value function, turns the text one into the number one. Ah, look, now if you highlight this puppy, it outputs a one and data type is number, that made age happy. As you can, right, we won't test it, but we now know that would work. Now what about for higher date? Well, for higher date, we could do an insert, we can insert a date picker, we pull this down here, and now we're back to this again, right? So what are we gonna do? Oh, let's rename that thing, right? Let's stick with that DP higher, okay? We're gonna go here, and now we're gonna replace this, right? What is this? This is currently a date, so we gotta make sure we get a date here. So we're gonna do DP higher dot select a date. Look at that, that shows that. That is a data type of date. Boom, it is working. Last but not least, good at their job. Um, you know, we could do some bunch of different controls up here. And right, and what's important to understand is it just wants true or false. But so we'll just do the most classic one, we'll do a toggle. So if we throw a toggle down here, we could rename this to be TGL um, good. And so the way the toggle would work, we'd go back up here and we'd say, hey, good at their job. TGL good dot value. What does that return? That returns a data type of Boolean. Yes, no, true, false, Boolean, it's currently false. If we hold down the Alt key and click on it, it's now true. All right, now we didn't do title because title and first name are both text, they both work the same way. We could, we're not going to. But then, so all we gotta do now is we'll hit play and let's just take all those, see what happens. Title goes here, buddy, one, June 2nd, true. If we deselect that, we change this date to June 7th, and we change this to Buddy Jr. Oh, that would be crazy. And 13, press it again. Buddy Jr. 13, bingo, bingo. You can now patch all of the core fields, right? And that's what we're after here. But Shane, what if I wanna update one of those? Great question. So remember this part right here, this second se section, second line, second section of commas, whatever you wanna call it, this controls things for you. When you put default and your table name here, that says, that's code for make me a new record, right? There's more technical explanation, no one cares. But what if we wanted to have it update a specific record from the gallery? Well, what we could do is we could say, instead of using that record here, I just don't know where I'm going, we're gonna go right here and we're gonna say, all right, well, my gallery is called gallery one. So gallery one dot selected. Gallery one dot selected is the currently selected record. Easy way to visualize it. Click on your gallery. So what I was trying to do a second ago, go down here to template fill and you could say, hey, what if we change this to red? Oh, that's crazy. So that would work though, right? But we can do this. We can say if this item, let's move my cursor out of the way, dot is selected, so if that's true, then we want to make this um, my, one of my favorite colors, medium aquamarine. If not, we'll make it um, teal. <laughs> Let's just see how ugly we can make this thing. So now, right, they're all teal, but if we hit play and we click on one, look at that. Yeah. So that's telling me that this is a currently selected record. And so then if we went back to here, gallery one dot selected, will now update with whatever's in there. 
So right now it says title goes here, buddy, you know, one, blah, blah, blah. So this will change all those values to these things. And let's just change them to something different. We'll change it to 133, June 5th, good at their job, and buddy, junior, junior. Sure, who cares, right? So if we press this patch button now, same thing's happening. It didn't create a new record though. It updated this record, right? And it updated it in SharePoint, it updated in our gallery. Everywhere this record is now to that value. Well, Shane, what if I wanted to see the values that were in the selected one over here? Then what you would start doing is you'd have to start changing all these defaults. So like this default would then be um, gallery one dot selected dot, uh, what was that first name? First name. And so then now as you click through these, you'll see that the first name field is updating to the different people's first names. And so you would repeat that same pattern, right? Like that's not the point of the video, so we're not gonna go that way. Wait, leave me a comment below if you need me to go that next step. But we're, we're not after that today, right? Right now I just want the core, how do I use patch? And I think you've got that here. Also keep in mind like this gallery one dot selected, you are gonna outgrow this, right? you know, kind of like how you just outgrew forms, you got the patch, eventually you kind of outgrow things like gallery dot selected and you start using a variable called var record. You know what, I'll put a video up there to a link that talks about using a variable instead of gallery dot selected, but that's, that's okay, right? The first thing I want you guys to do is just go back to that simple button that we made in the beginning, right? Patch your list name, default your list name, and then work through those fields with just hard-coded values, troubleshoot your way through that, and then worry about adding these controls, then worry about doing records that have been modified, then worry about getting the controls to populate. Like it's, it's a journey, right? It's, 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 but it's baby steps. But this one was about getting you comfortable with patch. Also, I skipped a bunch of the columns. You're saying, well, Shane, I wanna do a SharePoint choice column or a lookup column or any of those. So another video up there, there's a whole like half hour video it takes to teach you about all those because they're, they're harder. And we wanted just to make this approachable. So questions, comments, things I can help with, tell me down below. I, I'm here to make these videos for you guys. Right? I made the first version of this video like five years ago, I got 200,000 views. So, you know, we're, uh, we, we, we like to help people here. I just need to know what you need to know. Also keep in mind, you know, here at Power Apps 911, we have full on training classes, we do on demand, we do live training, we do consulting, we do mentoring, we do like quick little, just help you fix one little formula and things. Like we have a whole litany of Power Platform services for you. So whether there's Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Power Pages, Power Virtual Agents, Power Desktop, it doesn't matter, we got your back. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.